Okay, seems to be good from my side, so we'll make a, a start. I'll get to be recording this as ever. Um, so whilst we're going through this, one of a few things I want to uh, bring to your attention is I have been working with Paul Preston, our very own Paul Preston, this is, uh, for, for many, many years. I started my property education and I learned an awful lot from Paul about HMOs and how to build a property business myself. As you know, Optimized Accountants is my firm for accountancy and tax, but I'm also a property investor just like you could sell. And you always need someone to turn to if you've got some problems or if you need some ideas how to generate more income. When I first started in property investing, I only had small little single lets. And it wasn't until I met people like Paul Preston and more importantly, being able to rub shoulders with people like Paul Preston to find out how he was making over a thousand pounds per unit on his HMOs. I met Paul several times and I indeed saw him at the Northampton Property Networking event, which he ran as well. I've been fortunate enough to see his rise in terms of property education of late as well, in which he's helping other people, just like you and I, to build a property portfolio. And it's going to be really interesting to find out from Paul tonight what his thoughts are on property in the future and what he has learned over those times. If you're listening, I'm hoping that you'll get some golden nuggets in which you can help yourself to make more money whilst being tax efficient with our help. So before we carry on, like I say, uh, if for all the clients out there listening in, don't forget, we will be recording this interview. So if you want to listen back, you can do. We'll be taking the recording and we'll be creating a podcast as well. And you can access that all through the Optimize app on your Android or your smartphone, iOS. Don't forget, you can book your 30-minute tax consultation. So if you hear anything about uh, things you hear from me or indeed Paul, anything from a tax perspective, there are some serious questions you need to get answered, then make sure you book some time with us on optimizeaccountants.co.uk. And for clients, you know the code to use to make sure you get your call for free. And if you are referring a friend, if, you've got, if you're listening to what we've got to say tonight and you've been using our services and you think, well, actually, these guys here need a good property tax specialist, need a good accountant, then make sure that you uh, refer them to us and we'll give you £100. Now, if you don't want to take that £100 to yourself, that is absolutely fine. All you need to do is give them the £100 and let them have a meal out on you. Or indeed, if you're feeling rather charitable, then you can simply let us know and we'll give that £100 to shelter for you. So, Paul Preston, uh, if you can unmute yourself now, I'm going to hand over the reins part to you, good self. Uh, and the first question of the evening is how and why did you start in property investing? Great. Well, uh, hello, Simon, first thing, and thanks very much for, uh, well, for inviting me to, uh, to be here tonight. Always great to, well, always great to spend time with you and, and to support you, and um, thank you for everything that you've done for me over the years as well. I know we've, we've built a great friendship through that property journey together, and uh, very grateful for all your support, um, you know, not just business-wise, financially, of course, you've been my accountant for many, many years now, uh, but like, you know, one of the great things about property is we all get to bring some build some really fantastic friendships through that as well. So uh, great to be here with you. Um, you. So yeah, I think, um, so when and why, I, I think, it, I kind of like in some ways sort of have two answers to this property journey. It was the, before I knew what I was doing part of the chapter, and then the second chapter is, you know, when I started to learn. So um, I, I'm actually 42 this year, and um, I bought my first house when I was 21, so 21 years ago this year. Um, and it, you know, it was the first place I bought after I left university. Um, I just kind of like knew that even then, I just thought paying rent was dead money. I, I didn't think I was an investor. I didn't think I was doing anything clever. I just thought, well, the sooner I got on the ladder, the, the sooner I can start owning my own home. Uh, and actually, um, I, I think my first house was about 56 and a half thousand pound. Um, you could get a 95% mortgage really easily. So, you know, 
when you had a couple of grand, you could get a house, but it still felt like a massive commitment. And I was still, you know, quite scared because you think, oh, all that money and it's a 25 year commitment. And, you know, when, when you've never bought a house before, it's a much bigger deal. Um, and I remember sort of stretching myself between a two bedroom flat for, you know, sort of 40, 45 or a three bedroom townhouse for 56 and a half. And um, I, I remember speaking to my dad and he said, stretch yourself, son, you'll be glad that you did. And uh, I did. And I went for that three bedroom place and I actually rented two of the rooms out to two of my mates from uh, who I, I finished university with. So I didn't know it was an HMO. I didn't, know, I didn't know I was renting the rooms out. I didn't know it was a strategy. I just thought it'd be quite cool to live with some friends. And in some ways, that's, I suppose, how the interest in property got started. And then, um, you know, 20 years ago, the market was, of course, starting to grow. Um, you could get 95 and 100% and even 110% mortgages. So actually, lending was really easy to get. Uh, every time you had a few grand, you could get another house. Um, it, it was pretty easy. So I, I did start buying single lets. Um, every time I had a little bit of money, I just thought it'd be a more constructive thing to do. And then after a few years, they'd all gone up and I could refinance them, take a bit of money out and go again. So it was all looking you know, quite good. I, I guess the only thing with single lets is I didn't make any money from them. I think probably on the whole, they largely broke even. Uh, and in fact, some of them probably lost a little bit of money every month. But, you know, when I was kind of like topping up into them, I just thought, oh, well, these things are like a pension, really. And you don't get a pension without paying in. Um, of course, I didn't actually know that you could make real income from property at that time. Because, you know, as the old expression goes, you don't know what you don't know. So in many ways, that was the start. And um, at the same time, I was building my career, building my business and actually uh, got into recruitment and started my own company. When I was 25 and that was going really, really well. Um, but unfortunately, I'm you know, sure many people who watch this video will remember the recession. So the, uh, of course, the UK economy and the job market it exactly, uh, it exactly followed the pattern of the property boom and, and the bust afterwards. So um, I had a, a really great year in 2007 business wise and, and property wise. But in 2008, literally, the, you know, my whole world fell apart. So um, unfortunately, I actually went bust. I lost that business. Um, and, and I think in many ways, I, I lost my way at that time as well. I lost all my confidence. And, um, you know, I, I guess I was a, a keen young entrepreneur and I was hungry and, and, and motivated and losing everything that really hit me very, very hard. And I just wasn't expecting it. And um, all those properties that then all of a sudden were breaking even or losing a little bit of money. Well, I, you know, I was out of work. I was effectively unemployable because I'd been a, a director or a MD of a recruitment company. And, you know, you probably remember all the redundancies at the time. And I think I was really down on my luck. And um, I, I was actually feeling very, very lost at that time. And um, I, I, I actually took a job working as a cleaner. It was, I don't say not, not necessarily the only thing that I could get, but um, everything that the whole experience had really knocked me for six. So um, I took a job as a cleaner and I was, you know, working, cleaning offices, cleaning toilets, making about, about six pounds an hour. And just kind of like, I knew that I didn't want that to be the rest of my life. And um, I kind of like a weird thing happened one day and I just kind of like got this light bulb moment because, you know, sometimes people would say to me, oh, well, you're, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you've had a business before, you can do it again. But I just felt so alone and so lost. And I was in a pretty bad way financially as well because I couldn't afford my mortgage. I was, you know, it was okay when I had a good income, but when I had nothing, uh, it was it was pretty painful. Um, so uh, all the cars went and that sort of thing. And uh, and what I had to do to start uh, keep my head above water was start renting rooms out in my own house, my my main home. And my you know I, I'd progressed to, to other homes over the course of the years as well. And um, I wasn't actually doing it to be an investor. Well, it wasn't a strategy. I was actually doing it because I was really desperate and I couldn't afford my mortgage. And, and all of a sudden, what I realized was that by renting the rooms out separately, those properties, actually, that house, it, my head was above water. My mortgage was paid, my bills were paid, uh, and I was still making some profit. So that was kind of like my light bulb moment. And that was the first time that I actually saw it as a, as a business opportunity, not just a, you know, a way to survive. Uh, and that was the aha moment. But of course, in many ways, the problem was, well, 
it, great, I need to get more of these houses, sure, and I can rent the rooms out and I can make some money. I'd, I'd found the way. But then, you know, when you're working as a cleaner making six quid an hour, how on earth are you supposed to save up for a deposit to get a mortgage? So uh, basically, I set myself that challenge in life. The, the, the equation that I needed to figure out was how do you get houses for free and make a shed load of cash from every single one? And, and you know, in some ways, that question was the start of the way back. So, um, yeah, fast forward to today. I mean, that, that life feels a very long time ago now. The truth is it wasn't that long ago. Um, you know, probably about, where are we, you know? Yes, I was probably still cleaning toilets seven, eight years ago, I think, you know. But um, uh, it does feel a very long time away now. But, yeah, fast forward to today with what I've learned and the, the system and the model that I've created, I was able to get myself back on my feet uh, very quickly. And uh, I've been able to build a, a multiple multi-million pound property portfolio now, of course, starting with uh, none of my own money. I didn't have any at the time. Uh, I'm very grateful I've been able to help thousands of people achieve exactly the same results through uh, my you know, property training and education programs now. So that's, I guess, it, that's the short version of, as it were, the, li the life story in a couple of minutes, I guess, really. No, thanks for that. And it's interesting how you should say about that you started with single debts. I think that's <clears throat> true of lots of property investors, that the, it's, it's probably the lower risk, it's the easier of the options of property investing, and then you do go into more elaborate property investing. Um, I think the standard way is, is typically is to put down a 25% deposit on a single net property, and you return very small yields out of those investments. But as you say, as you grow more sophisticated, you establish greater knowledge, uh, you, you obtain ideas from other people, mm. and you start to really push forward um, your investment strategy you start to bring out a lot more yield. And the, the, unfortunately, there are lots of property investors out there, I think, that give up because they only, they don't attend network events. They don't go to your kind of courses to talk about how to invest in property properly. Um, and as a result of that, I think they get disheartened. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. And, and I think, I, I mean, I now having helped thousands and thousands of people i've i've seen enough patterns so of course i observe things in myself but you do see these things repeating and it's not that anyone hasn't got good intention i think all of us you do the best you can with what you know and where you are uh, and, and we all do that so look had i known what i know now would i have done single lets no i wouldn't but had I never have done single lets, I, I probably wouldn't have got to the place to actually be aware that there was anything else to, to then learn more and go again. Um, yeah. So we always progress in life, but I think, you know, the, the, you know, the, the survival of the species in any species, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, it, it's based on being able to be adaptable. Uh, and there are, uh, there are a lot of things changing at the moment. And, you know, sometimes you could say, oh, it's challenging and it's detrimental to the market, but equally, if you look at the, the flip side of that coin, there's actually some very, very exciting opportunities coming up, and I'm sure we'll, we'll probably have a chat about, you know, maybe what's happening in the market yeah. and, uh, you know, and how we can come Well, on. that brings me beautifully uh, onto my next question for you, which is what major challenges have you personally faced, um, but also what did you learn from them? Mm. So um, <laughs> the short answer is, probably all of the major challenges are probably ones that I've faced. And right. some, you know, some property ones, some financial ones. Um, and also, I mean, I know, of course, this is, you know, this is property and this is about investing. But I think, you know, probably, and I alluded to it earlier, and, and I know I've experienced this and, and a lot of my students have as well. But actually, the biggest challenge is, is often the one in here. Um, it's about belief. It's about mindset. Oh, can I really do it? Is it possible for someone like me? I remember when I was getting started and I really wanted to be a, a property investor. And I know I had some single lets, but they didn't make any money. So I, I, wasn't, I wasn't doing anything clever. I certainly wasn't making an income. And, and in my head, I was just like, well, I'm a cleaner. Who, who would take me seriously? Um, I haven't got any money. How can I do this? So I think deep down, the belief is actually probably one of the biggest challenges. Um, you know, doing it by yourself, being, being lonely, because um, you can have good intention, but actually, if you haven't got that momentum or, or accountability, you know, you can just end up slipping back. Um, on the property side of things, the earlier challenges were 
A, money, i.e. lack of. I didn't have it. So the challenge was finding it or how to find it. And, and then, you know, actually knowing what to do. So education, because it's all well good going, oh, I've heard of that strategy. But, you know, if you don't know how to do it, how to implement it, you know, if you don't learn how, you can actually make expensive mistakes with property. Mm. Because if you think about it, you know, so when we talk about education, I mean, you know, this is professional advice, isn't it? Um, I've been working with you for years and we've built a great friendship. But our friendship aside, you are one of my trusted personal advisors and you know I, you know i believe in life that you know you in, in pretty much with everything in life you you get what you pay for right and you know you you know you don't know what you don't know in many ways but um if you make a mistake in business if you make a mistake getting the wrong advice from the wrong financial professional or tax advisor or accountant that can be costly same in property you know if you've got the wrong house in the wrong area at the wrong price and put the wrong tenants in, what's the cost of that mistake? And, you know, it could, it could be yeah. tens of thousands of pounds. So uh, education, uh, raising finance, and I'll probably say mindset, uh, all of those things, are, uh, mindset and self-belief, I've, all of those things have been challenges, not just for me, but, you know, for many, many people, I think. Good. No, it's really interesting. I think that's, you, again, back to what we said earlier, I think the, the problem is with people's mindset sometimes is when they get a knockback, they can equally kind of get into that rut whereby they think, well, it's not working for me, therefore I can't do anything. And and that's totally not true, is it? it, it you, people can move forward. I think that that's really is the, you've got to learn from your mistakes, but you can't let it affect you. I think you yeah. just get stronger as you as you make these mistakes. And, uh, and, and the beauty thing about life is that you do learn from them, um, which kind of, you know, takes us away from the kind of the, the challenges. But I see behind you, you've got some, uh, I can only imagine looking at here, there are awards of some nature. Do you want to just, just tell us what those awards are? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, uh, and, and, and I suppose just to th carry on from, from your previous point, I think, you know, you're absolutely right. One of the things I always say to my students is that, you know, quite often there are a hundred no's on the road to yes. And, uh, you know, if you get a knockback, it just means fantastic. One down, 99 to go. Um, it, it, and, you know, it is that uh, persistence that ultimately that, that will bear fruit. You know, sometimes people go, oh, I've tried everything. And then you would say, okay, well, just tell, tell me the 20 things that you've tried. Oh, well, I haven't tried 20. Oh, okay. Well, just, just tell me the, the 10 things that you've tried consistently you know every month for the last well i haven't been 10 all right well you just 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 the top five or okay look just tell me one thing that you've done every single week for the last 52 well i haven't done one thing every week so what, what you know what they mean is that, oh well i went to a network meeting once no one offered me a million pound in jv finance so network meetings don't work you know there's, there's a couple of key things which are key to success in life not just in property and business but that's repetition and consistency you know, in all aspects of your life. And um, when you do keep going and, and have that, I, without this being a sort of, a, um, you know, mindset -y personal development bit, I, I really do believe clarity of purpose. And lots of people talk about real reason why, but I do mean real reason why. I don't just mean I want more money. Um, because if you're chasing the money, you know, there's probably no real heart in that. And I think it's probably unsustainable. Um, if you have a purpose and you want to make a real difference and you follow your passion and live your truth and you're consistent with it, uh, I, you know, my experience is the money will flow to you no matter what when you, when you make it about, uh, about serving and, and giving. And um, yeah, the last few years have been a crazy ride. Um, yeah, six, seven, maybe eight years ago, I was still cleaning toilets for six quid an hour. But yeah, over the last few years, I'll uh, maybe show you a couple of these. I'll just um, pop my headphones out for a second and I can... I can grab them for you. Am I still coming through okay? Just give us a thumbs up if I am. Uh, so I can't hear you, Simon. Hang on a minute. So, no, sorry, Paul. I am can't I in? I'm I'll just take this out for a second. But, um, so, yeah, I mean, this, um, I'll bring a couple of things over actually, but uh, where are we? So, the, um, I think I'm actually maybe show you the picture up there. Um, is when I was actually speaking at the National Achievers Congress at London's Excel Arena. And that was, um, in some ways, a, a really bizarre experience. I'll uh, just actually maybe take my laptop over and just show you that one. Um, 
So this is at the uh, National Achievers Congress at London's Excel Arena. And yep. a, yeah, a few years ago, or it's probably about five years ago, I remember when I was just starting to get into personal development to, to work on my own mindset a bit more. I remember going to that very room to the National Achievers Conference and seeing Tony Robbins speak there. And I was in a total hole where I was at in my life. And I knew I needed to get out of that hole first. But I just thought, I remember sitting there thinking, one day, one day I'd love to be up on that stage and maybe helping and sharing and inspiring people in the same way that I knew that being sat in that audience listening was helping and, and inspiring me. And you know, just to, you know, you've got to set a dream, but, but crazy things happen because not only was it at the same venue, but it was the same event and in the same room uh, that I'd sat in that audience and thought, you know, one, one day I'll be up there. So that's certainly a proud moment. Um, you know, financially, of course, life's very different now. And thanks to property, I get to have a really great life. Uh, and I'm very, very grateful for that. I get to do things that I never would have been able to afford working as a cleaner. I am also got inducted into the uh, the two comma club recently for making over a million uh, in the last 12 months. Actually, that's actually technically for a million dollars, but made over a million pounds um, personal income in the last, in the last 12 months. Um, and this is one that I'm super proud of as well. That actually the uh, Guinness, Guinness world record. We wow. uh, wrote the Guinness world record last year or a couple of years ago for the, for the longest speech in history. Um, yeah. Which was a, a great experience. And uh, yeah, I actually won landlord of the year last year as well. And, I'm, I'm grateful for those awards, but I think you know one of the things I'm most proud of, the, the, the rewards are a really nice recognition, but I think what I am more grateful for and, and some of my proudest achievements are the, the community that I've been able to create and the amount of people who I've been able to help get results as well. So um, that's the, the most satisfying thing when you see someone who says, I didn't believe I could do it, but I've done my first deal and just all the messages of, thanks that you get and i'll be honest with you on any entrepreneur's journey we all have ups and downs and um you know i i do too we all have our down days we all have our challenges and then I, what i do is i just save a folder of all the messages i get just saying oh thank you so much i changed you know attending your training has changed my life i just remember this is what i'm doing with my family and it was beyond my wildest dream so i think they're the proudest moments really and um we're very grateful that last year actually because uh, not because of my results, but because of the results that my students get. Um, our training programs are actually uh, recognized as the very best in the world. So we won best training program in the world and best training company in the world. And that was uh, uh, within the Professional Speakers Academy. So that's a global award. So yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of that. As I say, not, you know, not because just because of my own results, but because, because of the results my students are getting. I think that's my, my most proud, proud part, my most proud achievement. And I think that's a good thing to hear as well. So I'm just, uh, someone's saying that they can see you on the video. I'm not sure. Have you got your video live? Because uh, I can see you. So, but someone else saying that they can't see you. So um, I'm going to just leave the videos as they are next to my page here. And hopefully I can. Yeah. I think that. I'm okay. I mean, I'm, um, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm viewing, mine says that I'm viewing your screen, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you see me though? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Right, it seems to work. Um, so it, thank you for that, sharing that. I think it's important for us always to remember the, the upsides as well as the downsides. Uh, I think as human beings in the UK especially, there is a bit of downtrodden feelings that sometimes that goes around. And when you do have the, the bad moments, I think you've always got to step, step back. And even if you are on the worst day of your life, have a sit back and just remember what you have achieved even in the last six months, 12 months, six years, just take some time out and just realize you have achieved something. You're just going through this blip and you, yeah. you, we all get over them. And I think it's, it's just a matter of kind of go to sleep, get up, go to the gym, do something um, away from that, that problem. And then the next day, just hit it twice as hard as you did the day before yeah. and you'll get over it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, I think... You know, especially like when people start in property as well, sometimes they're not always in the most supportive environment and they can have a bit of a negative peer group. And, you know, when it comes to building wealth, making money and building a better life for yourself, I'll be honest with you, some people don't like it when you're doing that. And then when you're doing that through property, it becomes this even more emotive thing because then everyone says, oh, you're capitalizing off people's basic human need. And, you know, look, 
you're going to get that. And, and you know what? I will say I understand it. I will say I understand it. But in my experience, whatever you do or don't do in life, someone is going to criticize you for it. So, you know, you could build a great life for yourself, look after your kids, look after your family, influence people, share, help give hundreds of thousands of pounds away to charity. And some, some people still go, oh, he's a flash git. He's a show off. He's changed. Who does he think he is giving 20 grand to charity? Uh, you know, you're darned if you do, darned if you don't. But, but what's the alternative? Well, the alternative, if, you, if you're worried about the criticism, is that you could play small, you could do nothing with your talent, and you could do nothing with your life. But then, but then someone could criticize you for that, couldn't they? Because they could say, oh, well, look at him. He had so much potential. He could have done something. He could have been someone. He could have made a difference. He could have elevated his family. He could have contributed in the world. He could have given to charity. But instead, he did nothing. And in my experience, whatever you do or don't do, you're going to be criticized for it. So I believe you might as well be criticized for building, leading, and living a spectacular life. And, and also, just surround yourself with better people that want to see you succeed and shine. You know, just, just choose your peer group better, I, I, yeah, I think, I believe. And now it's 2018. Obviously, we're going to go, you know, halfway through the 2018 already. So, what are the major changes changes do you see in the property market, uh, and how do you think you know people might be able to get over it? Yeah. So, I mean, some of the ones it's not. I say it's not so much what I forecast now, because of course we're all aware of fairly recent ones. So, I didn't I didn't necessarily see the stamp duty change uh, coming. Uh, or the removal of mortgage interest rate relief coming. I didn't necessarily see those coming. They were new. Um, but I, I do believe that both of those provide us with incredibly great opportunities, and I'll explain why in a minute. But what I am, uh, and I say what I see happening now, and uh, I've probably been saying really since I started, um, so not quite for 10 years since I've been speaking and teaching, but... Um, I would say that right from the start, I've been saying single lets don't work. You know, because why, why would you? I mean, even if I had some that were making 50 or 100 quid a month, you know, people would think that was good. And, and I was like, well, why would I want to have, you know, 20 houses that make 100 pound a month when I can have one house that makes two grand a month profit? Um, so I've been saying for a long, long time that single lets are just broke. That traditional model, it's just broke. So that this. Um, everything that's happened is going to be a catalyst for drawing attention to that. So um, there's a higher barrier to entry to get in because of the higher stamp duty um, with the tapered removal of the mortgage interest rate relief. And I know it doesn't hit the pocket all in one year, but we're, we're tapering towards that. The properties that break even or make 50 or 100 quid a month, a lot of those are going to go from making zero to losing a couple of hundred pound a month. Um, so people are going to be paying £200 a month tax on properties that make them zero. And it's just unsustainable. So more people will probably recognize this and get out of the single let market. Um, less people will want to get into the single let market because it's just going to lose them money. So there's going to be an ever-increasing uh, demand and ever-reducing supply. So I actually think uh, over time, rental rates will start going up. And I believe there's going to be an even greater movement towards, uh, towards rooms as the most accessible and affordable uh, level, if you like, of accommodation. So I think now is a really great time to be uh, learning how to do this properly because I, I think the floodgates are going to open uh, opportunities-wise. And I think as, as more people start to get out of the market, I think there'll be lots of great opportunities for rent-to-rents and, and lease options again. Um, and when you know how to better monetize these properties, it, you, won't, you won't be taking on a liability. You, you'll be taking a liability off someone else, which they'll be very grateful to give you. And you'll actually be able to turn it into a, well, a high-performing cash machine, turn it into an asset, really. So that is, I, I can see that happening. I think it, it's, it's going to continue to do so. Um, I'm also quite a big fan of, um, quite a big believer in, look, don't panic and ride it out. Um, the... The Section 24 thing was reversed in Ireland because all the, all the rents went up. Um, but when they took it away, the rents didn't come back down because, because a new benchmark has been established. So actually, if you, uh, if you ride it out, um, 
you know, probably it can end up being a, a pretty good time, even though it doesn't feel that great right now. But again, as we, one of the things we mentioned earlier was the key is adaptability. If you bury your head in the sand and just expect single lets to be great again, uh, you're probably going to have a problem. The other thing to mention as well is that things don't look too bad right now because the base rate is zero. And on or in real terms, it's you know, so m m borrowing money, money is effectively free at the moment, but on a hundred and twenty thousand pound mortgage, a one percent moving base rate is a hundred quid a month on an interest only mortgage. Uh, so for people who've got who are just about doing okay, two percent moving the base rate on just a hundred and twenty k mortgage, which is probably low when you take the UK average, it you know, it's going to be costing people a few hundred quid a month, and that could happen very quickly so again i think that's going to cause a, a, a disruption is probably the word but it's going to create opportunities as well for people who are prepared uh, and know what they're doing yeah no fair comment uh, i think you're right it is section 24 interestingly enough we've got a webinar coming up about section 24 and um, well, we'll talk about that later on as well uh, i mean there's obviously you could tell in terms of doing great successes in terms of your property your education business as well um, but what other, you know in terms of other property investments we don't need to name names but who have you seen um that are doing brilliant things and, and what can we all learn from them yeah i mean i think that the key is to i really believe in in any pursuit industry walk of life to be a to be a master of the craft you you have to be a student of the craft and um, that's what that's what I really believe, and I think we can learn from everyone. Um, I actually I continually learn from my students who are out there doing it because um, they're taking everything I'm teaching, they're forging forward, they're finding their way, they're trying new things. Um, the um, a lot of people are getting into HMOs, even if they have a little bit of discomfort of oh they perceive it as a little bit of more hassle at first well i'm going to say there is a bit more work but but you know don't let that put you off um because you've got to learn things in any business haven't you um but a lot of people as well uh serviced accommodation that is uh uh that, that market's really just exploded over the last five years i'm not going to quite say grown from out of nowhere but if you look at sites like uh, like airbnb for example that that was just a website to literally help people make a few quid out of their spare empty rooms and look at it now. So I think that's a, a really exciting market. I uh, invest in a number of SAs. I actually tend to joint venture on them and actually just put money into them um, rather than run them myself. But service accommodation is a big market. Um, the, uh, I know a few of my students have gone into commercial conversions as well and um, conversion of offices. And I think a lot of what's happening, I think it's it's inevitable that that the the property investor, the entrepreneur, will look at these things and go, well, why does the government do that? There's no logic in it. They need more accessible, affordable accommodation. Why are they doing this? And quite often I say, look, in many ways, there's not that much point looking for the logic in it because you won't find it because it isn't there. The, the point is, recognize what's happening and adapt. But I also think that is an inevitability at some point that someone's going to take stock on this and go, oh, either we got this terribly wrong or we need, you know, we need to change it again. So there might be other um, planning um, relaxations, if you like, in certain areas. There will be opportunities to, to capitalize there. Uh, definitely, um, you look at, um, I mean, <laughs> Much as it's unfortunate on one hand, it's just, you know, for every yin there's a yang. But um, in the news, you're always hearing about big chains on the high street closing. It's actually been quite topical at the moment. Um, now, I'm not necessarily saying that retail stores can become, uh, you know, the right type of accommodation. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is you look where we're in. We're always in a state of evolution in, in the human race. You know, why are these stores closing? basically because of the internet you know less people are actually shopping on the high street so how is that going to affect other things what's evolving how are we living and consuming differently and i think if you're always thinking about that um you're always trying to look at what's happening next and not be afraid of, of actually getting involved there'll be some great opportunities so i think commercial conversions serviced accommodation um some people like you know building as well you know built to let um but i, I you know i think um uh, it, I, I think i've seen a lot of times that 
it's like the seasons, you know, there's always winter, spring, summer, autumn, and you're not always in the same one, but it will come again. Um, and I remember when, you know, um, lease options, when I first heard about them, they were the flavor of the month. And then it was BMV, and then it was SA, and then it was commercial conversion. And, um, you know, then it was below market value again, and the same day refinancing, I just, I just missed the end of that as I was getting into property. But these things come again because the cycles cycles repeat and, and seasons return. So um, I think rent to rent and lease options, I think once the, the tax changes bite, I think there's going to be some big opportunities there. And, I, you know, it's almost like I can see HMOs being the new HMOs, if you know what I mean. I think, I think they're going to have to become sexy and popular again. Um, you know, I mean, by the way, I always think they're sexy anyway, just because of the sheer cash flow they can make. But I think, I also think as well, there's, I have a feeling there's going to be an emergence of a, of kind of like a hybrid. Uh, and I've seen a few of these places cropping up in London, but I think, I think I can see growth in like, and I think it's called like urban co-living or communal. So basically cool, hip, shared accommodation, um, not just for students kind of thing, but more top end stuff. Um, I can see that being an emerging market. And, and to be fair, that's, it's probably something I'd quite like to to get into as a, as a, as it starts to evolve. I can see that I can see that being something. Um, even as just well, out like, of interest. Sorry, Paul. Just out of interest, I was uh, attending another event at the weekend, and, and Judy Maurice was talking about uh, refurbishing HMI to our high standards. And funny enough, he bought out this company called Co Living, um, and they was building uh, a nine hundred bed HMO. I well, thought, you know, mega HMOs, we're talking about, you know, a, a six, eight bedroom HMO, but these are 900 beds. Now, she, she, clearly, clearly, they are not all sharing one kitchen. <laughs> um, but, you know, the idea that uh, we, we are potentially moving into a whole new way of living, uh, which is communal spaces that people can share and, and, and do stuff with, I don't mm. know how that manageable but I think maybe because house prices for the first time house buys is expensive still I know you can get uh, uh, cheaper uh, well buy to let uh, help from the government and so on but it's still quite a lot of money and people are quite sociable we can't forget that and maybe this co-living is the next step who knows but yeah. it'd be great to see what your insights will be in the next few years on that one yeah and I, I to be honest with you, I like with anything I I, I embrace the journey. It's like, yeah, we don't, hey, when we're doing this session again this time next year, we can look back and go, hey, well, what's happened? And then what do we think is going to happen? And um, I, I think the key is um, when stuff starts to happen, the one thing I would say, because this is what can we learn, is that don't wait on the sidelines too long, get involved. Because I'll be honest with you, like when, I mean, I, I just was getting into property at the end of same day refinancing and same day remorse. So I kind of like, I just missed that window really when you could legitimately do completely declared no money down. And I kind of like just missed that. Um, but there've been loads of people saying, Oh no, I, I'm you know wait and see what happens. And, and then they say, Oh, I wish I'd got into that. And then, and then lease options was a new big thing. Cause not that they, not that they, they were new, but they replaced the same day remortgage and BMV and no money down. So then lease options are a new big thing. And then, then uh, the lump people say, oh, well, I've heard that lease options are going to be regulated soon or they might be made illegal. But, but you said that like 15 years ago. So if you've been doing them for the last 15 years, you know, all I'm saying is don't wait forever to get in. Don't sit on the sidelines forever. That's what we can learn because life's going to pass you by and there's other people going to get in the game and just start being really successful. And, you know, and by the way, hey, look, what, what if there was a law tomorrow that said no more HMOs in the UK? Well, mm. I'm, I, in that case, I'm glad I've got the ones that I've got. Um, what, you know, what, what will happen to HMOs? Well, will there in the future, if, if, if the move is towards rooms, will rooms start to have their own council tax bans? Probably, yeah, because the council are going to want their coffers. And in, even in some places now, the, the, um, they're, they're starting to ban rooms, certainly ones with... Uh, on suites and uh, maybe little tea stations in. So I can see that happening more. Um, you know, I can definitely see that. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got to be, yeah, we've got to be adaptable to it and just, just get in the game. Rent caps, et cetera. Well, yeah, I mean, 
get in, you know, all I'm saying is get in now. Things will change and evolve. They do in any market. Um, but now, now's the time to be getting in. Yeah, no, I quite agree. Uh, when we talk about risks, so I'm not going to go into the risks so we know kind of what they are. Um, and now it's over to you. I mean, obviously, you know, I've been uh, watching you and your progression throughout the years. Um, I mean, in terms of, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Um, I mean, what is your offer if there is anything to be offered out tonight in terms of your education? Um, and just before you kind of go on to that, you know, guys listening in to this, Optimize will never and have never accepted any commission or kickback. So for whatever offer Paul has, we have no financial incentive. We can interview Paul because we see the value. We've been to his events. We've talk, spoken at Paul's events. And uh, we see the great value that he provides. So look, we're not here to make money uh, on the back of anything that Paul's about to, uh, to talk about. So, uh, Paul, over to you. What, uh, what have you got coming up for potentially listeners? Yeah, thanks, Simon. So I, I also just actually want to take a moment to, to recognize you as well. And, and I, I, you know, I do the same vice versa. Uh, you know, I recommend all of my students and clients to optimize. Uh, and, and I say the same. It's like, well, look, you know, I... I recommend based on good service. I don't, I don't want anything for it. You know, what goes around comes around. And uh, if you're getting good service, you, you talk about it. So, um, but also as well, hey, what, you know, what I'd like to do, and I, I come from a place of abundance, so I don't have an offer tonight in terms of anything to sell. Um, but I'm actually going to give some stuff away if that's cool with you. So um, a couple of things I would like to simply give to anyone who's watching this video, whether that it's live now or you're watching the recording in the future. Um, so we do provide property training and education. But one of the things that I believe is that, um, number one, if people are going to make a decision about that, I want to be able to give them lots of great content to start with so that, A, they can learn that it's right for them. They can get a feel for do I understand it? Does it make sense to me? Do I definitely want to do it? And also, by the way, there, there are other training providers out there, just as Simon would say, hey, there are other accountants out there and you work with who you connect with and, and who you're comfortable with. And I'm sure we both uh, agree with that. Um, so what I do, I say, look, let's, let's build the relationship together first. And I, and I actually have a free one day course. Uh, and um, the, the dates, you know, we, we probably run it about eight to 10 times a year. Um, uh, and whenever one has passed, we then update the website. But um, I'm going to give you the, the website address. Really easy to remember. It's freepropertycourse.com. Freepropertycourse.com. Really easy. So wh whenever you're watching this video, check that out. And the next one will be on that website. We'll simply change the dates, etc. So freepropertycourse.com. There you go. Um, let's spend the day together. I'll share with you. Um, how to source the, the right deals, um, the high, ultra high cash flow models, so HMOs and serviced accommodation, where to find the deals, how to get them over the line, and, and also, most importantly, how to get started with little or no money. So you remember at the beginning, I didn't have any money. I was working as a cleaner, making six quid an hour a lot of the time. So all the low money down and no money down strategies, meaning that you can get started in property, build a great business and a profitable portfolio, even if you haven't got a big pot of cash, you haven't got 25% deposit, you couldn't get a mortgage, you couldn't even pass a credit check. I promise you none of these things are a problem. Just come and learn how. So I'll share all that with you on my one-day fast track and you can come for free. And uh, the second thing I'd like to give you is we've spoken a bit uh, earlier today about environment, peer group, who you surround yourself with, community. And I'd actually like to extend an invitation to anyone who's watching to actually join my personal Facebook group, my personal Facebook community. Again, that, that's with my compliments. Um, it's uh, all of my students, people who've been on trainings with me, either live sessions like this or, or our live training. There's around about 6,000 people in there now. And it's a very positive, supportive environment. So if you want to learn, if you want to contribute, if you want to ask questions, if you want to give help, if you want to support and encourage each other, um, you're going to love it in there. Um, and uh, so that's on Facebook. I'm active in there. It's one of the only groups you'll ever find me in actively. And all of my success coaches um, and my crew, my team are in there as well. Uh, all, they're all students of mine or previous students of mine who've got great results and then actually want to give back to the community. So you can get lots of help in there. Uh, that is a Facebook group, um, but I've got a, a, it's what it's called a short, short link. So the short link is www.bit.com. 
dot l y forward slash pp my initials invitation so that's bit dot l y forward slash pp invitation um and i'm sure uh, wherever this video is posted i'm sure simon will probably be kind enough to post oh, the free property course and the bitly link as well uh, and I'll, I'll i'll look forward to seeing you there and i'll welcome you there and when you jump in just say hey actually i saw you on the video or on the webinar with simon m from optimize and then i'll know where you came from and just tag me and say hi and you'll be very welcome so yeah thank you my pleasure simon thank you great thank you ever so much and that is very very generous of you indeed so thank you ever so much for doing that um i will be sharing the links on the uh, video so when it's on um, the app i'll also provide the video uh, the links on the video so you can uh, access that at any point in time and don't forget if you've got uh, tax related property questions make sure you uh, go onto our website optimizeaccountants.co.uk to get the uh, answers to all of your tax related questions uh, make sure that you build your wealth in the tax efficient way don't forget we've also got uh, a client exclusive in terms of section 24 as well uh, this is the 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 update to section 24 in terms of what our new findings are uh, some really interesting uh, thoughts about how it not just affects the way that uh, mortgage interest cannot be offset against your income anymore that's obvious but there are other connotations around that now which we've started to research and understand uh, more importantly how to mitigate them so that's going to be something for you to be aware of so if you're interested about section 24 and how that can affect you then make sure you go on to our uh, Facebook page. And again, I'll send you an email later on with those details so you can keep up to date with our events. 